This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven. A lot has been going on in Index World, so first off, let me give you a quick update. Those are some loud birds. Those are some loud birds. I have been trying to split my time between half the time working on fun, cool R&D stuff that I can make videos about, and then the other half trying to set things up so I can start manufacturing and selling kits. And these two things are like pretty separate. <laughs> the R&D stuff that I'm working on in these videos is so far out in the future. Detecting a panel in a conveyor belt is like way down the road if you look at the milestones on the wiki for the project. It's so, so far away. And I think it's much more important for the project to be working on the kind of stuff that actually gets stuff finalized and finished and validated and out to people. So because of this, I'm gonna start making videos about this kind of stuff, the validation and figuring out how to kit something and how to set up a little mid-scale manufacturing line and all the stuff I'm working on behind the scenes to get this thing ready to build or buy. The Index project has grown so much bigger than I ever expected it to, so the nature of the channel is gonna change along with it. Honestly, this won't change too much. I've already made a couple videos about this kind of thing, but yeah, we're gonna be getting into some manufacturing stuff. How do you actually make a thing at some kind of moderate scale? Ooh, it's gonna be so exciting. It's gonna be so good. So that means that the stuff I'm working on right now is getting the frame validated. I do not feel comfortable recommending that people build an index right now because I haven't actually quantified how good it is at doing the thing. Sure, I've picked parts before and I've gotten pretty good precision with some vision stuff, but it's not at the point where I'm okay telling people, yes, go spend money on this for an actual working tool and not just to help with R&D. So that's what we're gonna do. The biggest and most important change that needs to happen before validation efforts can go through is making it so that 10 Tensioning in the whole machine is way simpler and easier to do. Right now, all of the belt tensioning is done by hand, pulling it as taut as you can, and then trying to clamp down something and bolt it in place. It's hard to get good, precise tension on all the rails and make sure that you're actually getting a good Cartesian movement system. If you can't have really good, consistent, accurate tensioning on your gantries, you can't necessarily say for sure you're not gonna get a tremendous amount of backlash in all your movements, and you're not gonna get really good, precise placement with your nozzle. So that's really important to add in. I've gotten a ton of feedback from everyone in the Discord that this is something that people very much want and are missing in the build right now, so that's what I'm gonna work on. Once that is finished, it's time to validate the machine. This will be the next episode, but effectively what this means is running some lifetime testing and running some validation testing on the frame to make sure that it is very repeatable and it's very precise. I have some really exciting ways that I'm thinking about doing this, so that's gonna be super fun. I'm really excited about that. Before we dive in and make these changes though, we should know exactly what problems we're trying to solve for, so let's take a peek at the existing machine and see what sucks. Well, pretty much it comes down to that they all don't have this. On the wide gantry, the way that we're tensioning the rollers into the rail is awesome. Awesome. When you screw in this small M3 screw at the bottom, it pushes up the bolt that actually has the roller on it, so you can very finely adjust the tension of the rollers onto the rail. Where we don't have that though is on the belts. Here these two clamps are just clamping down directly on the belt that you have to pull as tight as you can and then bolt them in and hope that you got good tension. But there's no way to finely adjust it with some kind of screw or some other fine method. You also notice on the X gantry we also have that very fine adjustment method but only for one half of the roller. The bolt has two sides and it's going through two different prints, but we only have the adjustment for one side. The other one's just kind of hanging out loosey-goosey and you hope that you keep tension on that one. So we need to add it there too. And don't even get me started on all the other things that y'all have pointed out about this that are less than ideal. The mount for the Y motor, sometimes you some of the nuts, tension a lot of the parts are really But all of that ends right now. It's time to go spend an ungodly amount of time in FreeCAD, especially with the assembly workbench make some changes, and make sure that this whole thing fits together just a little bit better. And we can tension. Let's take a peek. All right, so first off, we got this fancy little thing. This little pivot arm is gonna let us very finely adjust the tension on the belts. Instead of trying to do it on the actual gantry and making the belt pull tight where the clamps are, you clamp it kind of tight, as tight as you can kind of get it, but not trying too hard. And then on the front feet, there's a little thing that you can adjust with a screw and it will just barely move out, just enough to give it the right amount of tension. Sick. This is happening on both the X gantry and the two Y gantries. 
Now the Z needs tensioning too. This one's a little bit more chill. It's just a few slotted holes for the motor mount. For this one, I think it's gonna be absolutely fine. Even though it's not a fine adjustment with a screw, it still greatly alleviates the stress of trying to pull the belt really tight and slot it into the Z gantry, the, the little section of it that has all those little ribs that holds the belt in place. Instead, you just get it as about as close as you can, and then you pull up on the motor and tighten it in. Much, much easier. And lastly, and this one was a real tricky mother trucker, is getting both sides of the bottom roller on the X gantry to be screw tension adjusted. Wow, that was one heck of a sentence. The reason the first pass I only did it on one side is because the bolt that holds the idler for the Z axis is totally in the way. I spent maybe like two or three hours playing around with different ways to get this adjustment in there. A lot of people gave me good suggestions on how to go about doing it. Ultimately, I settled on having the two channels where those two bolts can go to pass through each other, and then just making sure that the adjustment bolt is short enough that we can fit the M5 bolt through the bottom that holds the idler. I've also made a myriad of other changes to these parts to generally make the hole diameters a little bit better for through hole or threading diameters. In the CAD model, I've now included every single fastener in the entire machine, so all of that is accurately reflected in the list of all the objects in the assembly. Holy smokes, did that take a long time. <laughs> But it's in there. So, now it's time to take all of these parts, send them over to my brand spanking new Ender 3, and print a new version that has the spiciest tensioning this side of the Mississippi. Making the new feature bright red is a little on the nose, don't you think? It was truly, purely an accident I ran out of black filament right before I had to print the juicy new parts. But I'm not mad about it. <laughs>
I'm about halfway putting the whole machine together and so far I am loving these new updates. This whole system for tensioning the belts is an absolute dream. When I was tensioning the belts, tensioning, I shouldn't even really say tensioning, but just attaching the belts onto the actual Y gantry, I pulled it about as taut as I could without worrying too much about it and having this little adjustment piece all the way in so I had plenty of stroke to adjust it later. And then after I clamped it down, I came over here and just twisted it until I got some good tension. Bada bing bada boom, baby. It's like perfect. I am so excited. <laughs> oh, it's so good. <laughs> I've also mounted the X gantry and that whole system for tensioning both sides of the rails also works so well. I was a little worried about getting that M3 adjustment screw all the way up into the part to actually adjust the location of the bolt that has the roller on it, but it went straight up, no problem, and it totally got out of the way for putting that other bolt in, the perpendicular one, that acts as the idler for the Z gantry. Just super stoked about it in general. So far, the tension on the Y is like really consistent and just wonderful. I can't test the X yet because I haven't put the whole wiring harness in and that has the motor, which is part of the whole assembly for the X gantry. So I'll be able to test that one in a second. But with the two Y gantries so far, oh, it just, it's really good. Finally, like super, super fine precision tuning of tension for all the belts going on so far. Really stoked. Chef's kiss, baby. Chef's kiss. So now I need to get the wiring harness in. <laughs> this is actually kind of cool. <laughs> it's like all the perfectly lengthed cables with all the printed parts attached, just holding everything in place. <laughs> I kind of like it, it's funky. But bolting this on and plugging everything in will then get us to the point where we can really test this thing out and see how we're looking. Well, this is a lot better. You can just feel in the whole assembly that things feel just a little bit better. <laughs> it feels a lot more rigid and also the tension is exactly where I want it to be. Adjusting these little hinge tension arm things is so good and works so well for getting a really specific amount of tension that I want for all my axes. I feel super good about how this version came out, including how easy it was to put together. I've put together a lot of these frames <laughs> and a lot of the changes that I've made made it easier to put set screws in and fit stuff together and figuring out kind of an order of operations of what part should go where. But of course, all these observations are purely qualitative. I don't know actually numerically how good this is. And that is why the next episode is gonna be all about validating this design. I need to make sure that this machine as printed as is on my desk right now can pick in place 0603 components at least, that it is repeatable and can consistently come back to the same location, not just doing it once, and that after running a tremendous number of cycles, it doesn't get any slop developing or any other weird errors that show up after running a bit of lifetime in it. These are all things that I'm gonna explore in the next video. Well, anyway, that's it for this one. I'll see you in two weeks with the whole validation episode. I have a Patreon, so if you'd like to help support me and projects like the Index, there's a link in the description where you can become a patron. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. But before I go, I wanna thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay has been making all of the boards for this project and they have always come out really, really nice. I've asked them to do some pretty wacky stuff, especially with the feeder, using their boards not only as a mechanical part for the actual structure of the feeder, but also for the indexing wheel, which needs to have certain reflective properties and mechanical properties to act like it's supposed to. Pretty funky stuff. The Gerbers I gave them were like borderline insane and they still totally put it through their process and they came out great. 
From the time you put in the order to the time you get them at your door is usually about a week. If you're looking for a board shop, I highly recommend PCBWay. Thank you so much to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. That was probably the most deranged shot I've ever taken in my life. I am the 3D printer now. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. <laughs> mm -mm -mm -mm.